Hey guys, it's Thomas Bianco. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to program my autonomous drone using a program called iNav, or we can also do it as a standard drone, and I'm going to show you how to do it in Betaflight, which is super easy. So let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we want to do is go to GitHub, um, and we're going to go to the iNav flight, and then we're going to find the iNav configurator. Once you get to this GitHub uh, page, you can see um, at the date of this release, uh, we're at 2.5.0, so that's the release we want to get. So if you scroll down to the bottom here, you can see there's a bunch of different types depending on the computer you have. So here, Linux, you can get this, uh, Mac OS, there you go, and I have Windows, so I'm going to get the Windows 64. Once I download that, it's going to show up here. Wait for that to download. So now that it's finished, we are going to open it up. Now that we have it open, we can uh, extract. So we're going to extract all the files in here because our configurator is inside here and a bunch of other stuff that we need to use INAP. So we're going to click Extract. Alright, now that that's done, uh, we can open the file. And you see INAV configurator right here. So we can double click that and that's going to open up. Uh, you might get this Windows protecting your PC. Don't worry about that. Run anyway. All right, now that we have this open, we are ready to start configuring iNav. Uh, some of the things you're going to make sure that you have are uh, the latest uh, drivers for uh, your PC. So you can use the USB devices. Sometimes you'll have problems connecting to your uh, drone if that happens. So make sure your driver is up to date. You might also need a program called Zadig, which I have on my computer. That's going to help you if you're trying to uh, put your drone to DFE mode. And that's going to allow you to go to the firmware flasher and upload the new firmware. All right, so I've now put um, the drone into DFE mode. This is going to allow us to uh, flash the iNav firmware onto this port. If you don't know how to put it into DFU mode on the Kakute F7 that we put in here as a DFU button, or you can come into, you can connect, go to the CLI and type in BL or DFU, and that's going to put it into DFU mode. You know you're in DFU mode and that's connected when it's in DFU here. So you're going to go to firmware flasher. We're going to try and find our board. So we have the Kakute F7 right there. We're going to select the latest version of iNav. Then we're going to go to full chip erase. And we can load firmware online and then flash the firmware. Okay, so now that we, we finished flashing iNav on here, uh, I just click uh, connect. And all of this should pop up here. Uh, I've already configured every here, everything here, so I'm just going to walk you through what I've changed uh, so that you know uh, what, you, what you need to get started with. So the first thing is calibration. Uh, you can see all of these are checked. The first time, these will all be grayed out, and you're going to have to calibrate your accelerometer. And by doing that, you uh, will make sure it, it knows what angle is true, uh, flat, and all that kind of information. So the first thing you want to do is uh, click Calibrate Accelerometer so it knows that you want to do the calibration. And then it's going to tell you everything you're going to need to do. So the first thing you're going to need to do for step one is place it on a flat surface. Um, I grabbed a level for this to make sure that my surface was completely flat as fast as possible so that this could be as, this calibration would be as accurate as possible as well. So once you uh, have, have your drone on a flat surface, you click Calibrate Accelerometer. Then you flip it upside down. Hit Calibrate Accelerometer again, uh, put it on its side, Calibrate Accelerometer, face it upwards, Calibrate Accelerometer. You just keep on doing that for each one of the positions and push Calibrate Accelerometer whenever you have that in the correct position. Uh, using a level or even like a 90 degree um, a surface is really helpful for this to make sure that your accelerometer is actually flat and making sure that it's true uh, 90 degrees and true uh, like in all these directions. So uh, grabbing a level or any sort of uh, 90 degree or flat surface is really going to be useful for calibrating your accelerometer. 
The next thing is calibrating your compass. So because we installed a compass on here, we have to calibrate this. It's very simple. You just click calibrate compass and you want to rotate the drone in as many directions as you can in 30 seconds. And you see all the information is here on what you need to do. So you can just follow that there. Once you're done all of this, you hit save and reboot. Once you reboot, you can come over here in your mixer. When you're in your mixer, you can select the type of drone configuration that we have because we have a quad X and we made our propellers spin inwards. Uh, that's going to allow us to use this configuration. So you're going to click quad X and then you can click load mixer. Once that loads, everything here should be already set up. You can click save and reboot. When it reboots, you're going to come over here to outputs. We are going to uh, make sure that enable motor and servo output is turned on. By default, it's turned off, so make sure that's on. Uh, DShot 600, that's what we were going to be using in beta flight, so we'll use it here as well. Um, we don't really want stop motors on low throttle. That's not really useful for our case, but if you would like that, you can turn that on. Here you can also test your motors, make sure everything is working properly. If uh, your motors are set up and one of the motors is spinning backwards, uh, we have to. You're gonna have to download um, VL Heli uh, Suite, and that's gonna allow you to change the motor direction. I've already done this. There are plenty of videos on YouTube on how to do this. It's very very simple. Make sure. So once you make sure all your motor directions are spinning the right direction, it's a little chart for that. Um, you're ready to go. You can click Save on all of your outputs here. Then we're gonna go to Presets. So here in presets, it's going to be really, really simple. It's going to give you a bunch of advantages here and help you skip some steps when setting everything up here. So because we have a 5-inch multi-rotor, we can click this and you can apply this preset. I've already done it and I've already made some changes to this tune. Uh, so I'm going to leave that. It's going to change your rates, your filter, and everything to optimize to your kind of drone, which is really, really helpful. It's going to save you a lot of time in the tuning process. So here we've got to come down to ports, and now we're going to set up everything that we need to make sure that the uh, flight controller knows where things are plugged in. So the first thing is USB, so there's a, a dedicated uh, port used so we can connect to the flight controller. Uh, don't touch this at all. You want to make sure that everything here in the first row is completely untouched by default. Then for your one, we put that as our serial RX. So you're going to make sure zero access is uh, checked, and everything else here can be disabled. UART 2 and UART 3 uh, should be blank. UART 4, we have our GPS uh, on it, and uh, we just come down to sensors, and you can click GPS here. And then on UART 6, we have telemetry, and this is going to give us telemetry uh, to our radio, so just enable smart port, and that's going to allow us to do that. And then UART 7 is again empty. Once all of this is set up, make sure you hit set and reboot. Then we come down to configuration. A lot of this is already set up uh, because of this uh, preset that we did. So everything here you can leave uh, pretty much the same. Uh, you, you might want to change uh, a couple things, uh, like GPS for navigation telemetry. You'd want that checked. Um, you can also add an additional uh, features here, like your OSD, uh, your black box data recorder, things like that, uh, an RGB LED strip, if we have that we can just tick that, um, and everything here should be set up uh, perfectly. So also you can set up your battery capacity because our ESC has uh, sensors for this. So my battery capacity is 1300 milliamps, so I'm going to type that in there, and everything should work here. We can also set warning capacity. Um, I think I just leave that as is for now. I'll set that up later. Uh, everything here is already configured, so it's really, really simple and easy for us to get started. Also, put in a little personalization of my craft name. Once we've done that, we'll save and reboot. You can see rebooting because I actually made some changes here. It's going to reboot. There we go. And then we can come down to failsafe. This is very important that you set up your failsafe. So. I personally like to have, because we have a GPS, to use some of that features, and we can have return to home enabled. So whenever we have a failsafe, uh, we will have a return to home, so the drone will rise up and then return to home, as it's demonstrated in this picture here. But one thing that we also want to make sure is very crucial is that if um, our failsafe, and like an alternate, if our failsafe isn't working, or 
if uh, we don't have enough uh, signal uh, to use our failsafe, then it's going to have an alternate. We're just going to drop out of the sky. So if our failsafe is triggered and we don't have enough satellites to properly do a return to home, it's just going to drop out of the sky. And that's really, really important to have that there because if it doesn't, um, your drone will probably just do nothing and fly away. So make sure you have that alternate there. And once you've done that, save and reboot. PID tuning. So in PID tuning, I didn't really do that much. I just configured, oh, actually, I actually didn't save. So the only thing I did here in PID tuning, I haven't PID tuned anything yet. I'm just going to go into my rates and I'm going to punch in my rates. All right, now that my rates are punched in, I'm just going to hit save. That's that saved. You can see up here, save to EEPROM. Uh, we have advanced tuning, so here you can come through, just skim through some of these settings, um, any of these little things you need to change. Uh, you're definitely going to have to calibrate some of this stuff here. So, for example, the hover throttle, this is very important when you're doing your return to home, because it has to know uh, what uh, throttle it should use in order to stay perfectly still and hover. So you want to make sure that's set. You also want a descending um, throttle value and all that kind of stuff. So you're, this is going to be different for every, every drone. So when you take off, uh, I recommend just like trying to find your hover, your hover point. Uh, once you find that, go into your uh, settings of your controller and you can see what the, you see this uh, value here uh, that you can also see in your receiver if you're plugged in, which I don't think you'd be plugged in flying. Um, these values here are what you're going to be punching in to this uh, right here in hover throttle. So you want to make sure you get the correct value, punch that in so that it knows what the hover value is. So uh, next thing we can do is come down to receiver. Uh, make sure our channel map is correct. Make sure all the uh, roll, pitch, throttle, yaw, everything is working as it should. Uh, we're also, as we sh showed before, we're going to set up our uh, modes in our uh, flick or in our uh, uh, transmitter. Once it, all of our switches are connected to uh, aux channel, then we make sure those are working properly. We can check that here. Uh, and then we can come down to modes. So for modes, I have my arm channel on channel 5, uh, my angle channel set up, I have air mode and heading hold. So whenever I'm facing a direction, I just uh, don't want the drone to rotate. Uh, I can just flip a switch and it'll stay in that direction. I have a beeper uh, ready, a kill switch, just in case anything goes wrong, I just want the drone to fall. Uh, it'll kill the, on the certain switch. And then fail safe is also there, which is good. Because let's say you lose sight of the drone, uh, you want to be able to flip your fail safe and be able to uh, like just turn off your drone and have it either return to home or if that's not working, to just fall out of the sky. Um, it's like an alternative to kill switch when you're not as deep in a bad situation. So once you're done all this configuration, you click save. Make sure all your aux channels are set up correctly. You can see there's a little tick here. So when your controller is turned on, uh, you can flip some of the switches and make sure that your aux channel is actually triggering this function that you're selecting here. Adjustments, I didn't touch anything. A uh, GPS, you can make sure your GPS is working on the inside right now, so it's no location that's showing. Um, mission controls, this is one of the main things while we're using INAV for beta flight to do this kind of uh, thing here. So if we come out, you can select uh, a place on the map and we can do points uh, and have the drone follow a certain uh, point pattern. And it's going to be fully autonomous. You just select where it needs to go and load that onto an SD card that's going to be uh, that you can plug into the uh, flight controller that we have, and that's going to allow you to do those points, and it's also going to record information on the SD card to make sure that those points were successfully uh, going through. So it's kind of like a black box for the mission control, uh, except it doesn't show the information like black boxes. It shows different information, like altitude, direction, things like that, and GPS locations. So you can select points that you want the drone to go to uh, using this mission mission control here, which is really, really neat. Uh, then we have uh, OSD. This is a very personalized whatever you choose. There is a default. Now that when we go into the presets, we set a default here, and that's going to give us uh, this default here. I definitely changed some things here to my liking. Uh, so now you can set up your OSD to however you like. LED strip. Uh, I'll just leave that turned off for now. And then sensors again. 
you can see, make sure all the sensors are working, and that's perfect. So you can see, I just uh, rotated the drone, moved it a little bit, and you can see everything is working properly, and that's really good. So uh, we know all of our sensors are working properly. So here, in your tethered logging, you can test things while you're still plugged in. And then you can also set up your black box here uh, if you choose to do that. So you can have uh, recordings of your drone's uh, logs and what the motors are doing, uh, what, what your inputs are, what the drone's reading everything as. Uh, that'll be stored on the SD card that you can plug in again. And then here is your CLI where you can just directly type in commands instead of coming through all these menus and uh, changing things. Uh, which is definitely helpful for some cases, but I prefer just to go through the menus. So that concludes the iNav configuration, and uh, we can see that everything is set up here, and we should be ready to go. So if you want to go down the beta flight route and stick with something that's going to be a little bit uh, better for your drone, get you, it has uh, more options to increase the performance of your drone uh, and focus more on like racing and, and freestyle and get and tuning your quad so that it can uh, do those tasks for racing or freestyle. Uh, I recommend Betaflight. Uh, again, if you want to do more autonomous things, stick with iNav. Uh, but Betaflight still has some features for GPS, like return to home. So that's why I bothered to show it in this video. I'm going to be very brief going over it. So if you want to get the Betaflight configurator, go to the GitHub. Same thing we do with iNav. GitHub Betaflight Betaflight configurator. This is the latest release, the 10.7.0. Scroll down. And we can find the Betaflight Configurator Installer, all this version, Windows 32, and this is going to be the installer for it, so we're going to download that. Once it finishes, we're going to open it up. So we're going to open this, and this is going to walk us through installing it. Alright, so it seems that it's done. We're going to run the Betaflight Configurator and hit finish. Alright, so now that we are in uh, beta flight configurator. Uh, we can do the same thing that we do with iNav. We're going to put the Kaku TF7 in DFU mode by pushing the DFU uh, button. Then we are going to come up here and make sure it's a DFU. Come down to firmware flasher. Um, we're going to select the latest release. Or first we're going to select our board. So Kaku TF7. And we have beta flight 4.2.1. I I'm still going to stick to the uh, 4.1.1, but we can, you, I, I mean, I'm sure it's fine. I'm, I think the beta flight 4.2 is pretty stable right now, because um, you see unstable releases is check. So yes, yeah, so this is a stable release. You can go to uh, the latest version, which at the time of recording is 4.2.1. So you can click on that. Once all that is ready, uh, I would, if you're going from uh, iNav or even just from anything, I just recommend doing full chip erase, unless you're going from a previous version of Betaflight. Uh, full chip erase, uh, I think that's makes sense. No manual baud rate, that'll set automatically. It's better that way. Then you're gonna click Load Firmware Online, and then once that loads, you can click Flash Firmware. Once you push that flash firmware button, it's going to start loading through. Um, mine isn't plugged in right now, so it's not going to do anything. But you can flash the firmware and do the same thing as uh, iNav. All right, so right now I have open um, my drone, the autonomous drone. Uh, I'm currently running the 4.1.1. Uh, I know it's not the latest release. I'm going to update soon. I just, uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to leave it as is. So I can show you all my settings. Uh, so the first thing is uh, we need to make sure all of our UARTs are set up. Next thing, go to configuration. Um, I have the shot 600 set up. That's working pretty well. Um, motor stop is off. EC sensor off. Um, this I this is required. Uh, this information here is required for uh, the tuning which we'll get into later. Uh, so 14 mortal pools, it's like the standard pretty much for all five inch drones. They have the same sort of uh, number of magnets inside the motors. So then we have uh, board sensor alignment. This is just to make sure that everything's working correctly. I had to rotate my um, uh, 
magnetometer only because it was spitting out false readings so uh, I had to rotate it a little bit uh, and that fixed everything right up accelerometer roll and trim you can do that I just prefer if your accelerometer is off just to calibrate your accelerometer up here in setup you just come and calibrate accelerometer make sure it's on a flat surface and that's much better uh, so if you continue here in configuration I named my drone uh, Thomas's Ferrari because uh, I was racing the drone or not racing it but I flew it pretty fast so I like the name Ferrari um, so next thing we have to do is set up our GPS so GPS we're going to turn on U blocks is our protocol. Auto baud rate, auto config is perfect. Uh, and North America has to be uh, the correct ground assistance type. So next thing here is we have other features. Um, because we have some LED strips, I turn that on. Uh, telemetry, I also have that turned on. OSD and dynamic filter, those are also on. So this is uh, what I've set up. If you want permanently to have air mode turn on, uh, you can do that here as well but I prefer to have that off. Uh, we have a beeper from the motors because the D-Shot ESCs can allow us to do that so when arc is lost um, or arc is set it's going to beep and then here all the beeper configuration I have everything turned on. I'm actually going to turn off the USB because I don't want it to beep when I'm plugged in uh, with the USB. So we'll hit save and reboot Now that we're rebooted, uh, we'll go to power configuration. This is just for our OSD sake. Uh, you can set your minimum cell volts and everything when it's going to warn you. Uh, your fail safe, you have to make sure you set this up. This is where we have some of our uh, pretty much the only autonomous uh, things that we can do here in Betaflight. Uh, GPS rescue is the main thing. Uh, we can set a bunch of these parameters here for our GPS rescue in case we lose signal. Uh, which is very important. If the other thing that was uh, set here is that if GPS rescue uh, is not working, it's going to default to drop. Uh, you can also have land, but I find it's less safe that way. It's better to have drop because you never know where your drone's going to land. So by having it drop, you just kill all power, uh, less chance of it hurting somebody or something. But GPS rescue is probably one of the main things that in beta flight that's the only autonomous feature that we can use. Uh, so now we can go to PID tuning. This is what I've been tuning uh, over the past few months on this drone. Uh, I've been tuning up some of these settings. I haven't really touched any of these and more mainly focused on my rates because uh, I haven't flown drones in a while so I have to completely retune all my rates. Uh, but I've been focusing on the filtering here. This is one of the main features with beta flight is you have access to these filters. And the easy thing is instead of controlling all these parameters, you can easily just slide these uh, filtering sliders here and you can either uh, increase your performance or if it's, it's gone too far, you can tame it back a little bit. Uh, this is where I've kind of found mine. I definitely could push it much, much further, but I prefer to leave it as is. Um, but yes, yeah, this is a pretty good, cool feature in Betaflight. It's going to help make your drone fly a lot better just by moving these two little sliders. Uh, which is really really cool. So now we're going to a receiver. Uh, your channel mapping should be like this if you set up your radio correctly. Uh, my RSI aux channel I put on 5. Uh, everything here is set up correctly. So now we're going to modes. This is all completely um, optional for whatever you uh, like on your controller. So I have arm set to aux 1, angle to aux 2, um, GPS rescue in case I just lose sight of the drone and I still have connection by uh, like my video signal gets lost for example I just flip the switch and GPS rescue will go in that's on aux 4 beepers on aux 3 uh, I have black box uh, to turn on so if I want to monitor my drone record that on SD card I can do that uh, I have air mode here I also have flip over after crash or turtle mode uh, and GPS satellite count. So this is just going to tell me uh, if I have a GPS satellite count. It's going to beep it out to me uh, how many satellites I have. So I didn't do anything in adjustments or servos. GPS here, you can just, if you're outside, right now I'm inside. So you see I'm like having very low signal. Um, 
so the GPS isn't really getting any signal here, so that's why uh, normally you get a little map here once your GPS is working. Then you can go to your motors tab, so you can calibrate your motors, make sure everything is working properly here, plug in a battery, click I understand the risks and conditions, you can move them individually. You can see right now there's an air uh, 100, that's because there's no battery plugged in right now, so it's always going to have that air. If you plug in a battery and you're still having an air, uh, then there's something wrong uh, with your ESC or you set up something wrong. So make sure that when you plug in a battery, there should be no red air messages here. Because there's no battery plugged in, that's normal. So now we have our OSD here. I set up my OSD to my liking. Uh, you can have things. This is where pretty much the only functionality for our uh, compass inside of our GPS module is where we can have uh, directions here. Uh, we can also have our, uh, like, showing us what direction we're facing. I don't even use it because I find it's not really useful, uh, just to, unless you're doing long range to know what north is. Uh, I don't use my compass that much in my OSD. Uh, some people might if they're doing long range, but I prefer not to. Uh, video transmitter, if we had connected our video transmitter to our flight, or, yeah, to our flight controller, we could control it here. I didn't. Uh, here's where we control our uh, LED strips, so you can set your LED strips here and change the colors, and you can even have them set to warnings, which is pretty cool. Sensors, you can read all your sensors. You can see here if I move the drone around, you'll see all the sensors moving, which is kind of cool. That's how you know everything is working. Um, you can also see our altitude is working here, which is also really cool. Tethered logging, at least if you want to do that. And then here you can read your black box and turn on black box and configure the black box settings. And then finally you can come to SLI or CLI and you can uh, type in command directly if you didn't want to go through all the tabs and change things. So that's how you set up a uh, beta flight and get everything set up. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. It'd be really helpful if you would uh, like and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, make sure to hit the bell notification so you get notified when future videos of mine come out and when the part three of this series comes out. So uh, make sure to do that. Uh, if you like this video, you'll probably like some of the other videos that are popping up here. So maybe click on those and watch those. Uh, thank you for watching this video and see you later.